Welcome back to the Bookends YouTube channel. I'm James McGowan. I'm Jessica Faust. So I was talking with a writer on Twitter and he asked me the best way to skip an agent slush pile. Um, so we have a lot of thoughts on the term slush pile and the best way to skip it. Um, but I thought we can do a video that's basically helping an author conquer the agent slush pile. Okay. So we're yeah. flipping this one on its head a little bit. Yeah, so can we talk about the word slush pile? Can we make this go away? Well, that's why I pause so that you can then have your moment <laughs> of just complaining about it. So in my not so humble opinion, <laughs> slush pile is an extremely negative term that was originally created. And I'm totally making this up. You guys can Google see this to see the real etymology. Is that the right word of a slush pile? But the truth is, when I think of slush pile, I think it was a term created because agents would submit to publishers. And back in the day, even when I was still young, authors would also submit to publishers because everybody had everybody's snail mail address and you only submitted via snail mail. So they would send their manuscripts unrequested to publishers. That was the slush pile. It was not material that was requested. Right. I don't like the term slush pile used for agents. I think it's just a nasty term. Like, do you really want to think of your manuscript as slush? I just think it's the wrong term. I think it denigrates an author's work. And I think the truth is, 90 plus percent of the authors we represent were not people that came through referrals. They're not people we met at conferences. There's not people whose material we requested outside of our query inbox. Everything in our query inbox is where we get most of our clients. Right. So to call it slush makes it seem like it's unwanted. And if it's unwanted, then I should probably quit my job. Right. So 90% of one agent, and there are dozens of agents yeah so that's a lot of people's work that we are saying is slush and i just like it's such a nasty term like it's that it's that gross muddy, muddy <laughs> snow on the street but that's not what this is these are these are possibilities right and also i mean you are very passionate about hating that term but it also it's not just a matter of what the term is it's a matter of what the term evokes for writers yeah so when a writer hears the term slush pile they think i don't want that i want to get out of that i want to get around that i just want to go to the agent how do i do that so i think for me and i'm i'm coming from your same point of view i don't like that yeah. term either and I think it's it's a matter of changing what you think about the slush pile. And I don't know that we're gonna change the term. We don't use it, um, <laughs> but <laughs> we can try our best to sort of eradicate the term, but it, it at least change the mindset in, in a couple authors' minds that it's not about skipping the slush pile. It's about getting your work into it. I, I think slush pile implies to the author that it's unimportant. And I don't want any author to feel that when they are querying or sending their work to an agent that we don't deem it unimportant. Right. I mean, reminder, I don't have a career without your manuscript and you as the author behind it. So right. I see everything and you see, we see everything in our query inbox as the next possible, name the person you want to be the next possible of. Yeah. And really, a, the slush pile is our query inbox. So just call it that. Yeah. And then you feel a lot better about saying, I am in Jessica Faust's query inbox. Yeah. <laughs> so. and, and in terms of sort of getting around that, um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I well, I think you said it best when we discussed doing this video. The first way to get around it is change your mindset. Yeah. Exactly. And I think that's the most important way to get around it, because once you send that query, then you don't feel like your work is not valued. Your work is just sort of sitting there languishing until an agent decides, well, it's time to read the slush, because that's not how it works. For us, at least at Bookends, it's we're reading queries today. We are reading the work from the people who want to work with us. And that's an honor. It's exciting for all of us. So think of it that way. You are in our query inbox and we are going to get back to you. I think that's the most yeah, important first step. We each set goals every year for a minimum number of clients, new clients we want to sign. Yeah. So we are going into our inbox with the hope that today is the day 
we check one of those hopefuls off our goal list. Yeah. And, you know, I think bookends in 2020 signed 100, give or take, new clients. We did. So we are, you know, very seriously looking in there for something. Yeah. And that's the, so, I mean, there's talk about, okay, well, we could do in person, in person pitch events. We could do online pitch events. We can do all of the other events and sort of things that you can do to contact an agent now, but still the best way to get into contact with us is to get into our query inbox. Most of my query, most of my submission evaluation time is spent in my query manager. Yeah. Listen, I think that um, we forget that whether it's an online conference or an in-person conference, if those ever happen again, or um, sort of Twitter or Facebook, or I guess most of the pitch events happen on Twitter. These pitch events, um, in my mind, while I think they are useful, while I think they are good, while I think they are fun, while I think they are exciting, they are more limiting than a query inbox. Because of algorithms. Yes, because when you put, so, I don't make most of the pitch and runs. In fact, I would say that if there are 50 Twitter pitch events a year, there are probably only three that bookends agents in any way, shape or form can really get to. They happen during the day. They happen when we're doing a million other things. Um, by the time for me, I often get in there, things have so many likes. I just, you know, even if I like it, I may be so far behind. But the other thing is when you're doing those events, you're limiting yourself to only those agents who are in attendance, whether it's online and Twitter or at a conference. So you might get around the query inbox, but you're only getting to those agents who've come to you rather than taking control of your career and making a decision about yeah. which agents you want a chance to work with. Right. And I have two points too. So they, and we're not saying that pitch events and things like that aren't worth doing, but they're always worth doing in addition to, and we've done a video right. on that too. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. if you're going to do pitch events, we absolutely recommend it. Just, we recommend also querying. Um, and the second point is that even if you do a pitch event, that pitch event results in a query. <laughs> <laughs> so you're getting back to the spot that you're hoping to avoid. And I'll be honest, there have been a lot of times I have seen a pitch in a pitch event and I've like, this sounds amazing. And I've liked it. And then I've gotten the query and the query for whatever reason, sometimes it's, I've already seen this. Sometimes it's, wow, that pitch is very different from this query or the pitch made it sound like the book was women's fiction, but in reality, it's in a, I don't know, techno thriller. So while I liked it because I thought it fit something, it does not fit what I represent. So, you know, at the end of the day, the query plays a big role in our next steps with the pitch. Yeah, so step one is sort of conquering and changing your mindset about what the slush pile is and how you should refer to it. And step two is writing the best damn query you could write for your book. Because there are no other workarounds or like secrets or tick tips and tricks that we're, you know, hiding from authors. It's just write the query. And I mean, there's query advice everywhere. And it's also, you know, with that writing of the query, it's not just knowing how to write the query. And, you know, we have done a million videos and we will continue to do a million videos yes. on queries. There have been just as many blog posts that I've done on the query. So there's tons of information out and there. And that's just us. <laughs> wow. Totally jinx on that. But you also need to know what the market, you know, you need to do your research. You need to do your job as an author. If you want to get around that query inbox, then give us a great marketable book that we want to read and sell. Yeah. Yes. So, so well, we hope that was helpful. I think the best thing you can do is just sort of start it over and just eliminate slush pile from your vocabulary in general. Change the way you think about it. Change the way you talk about it. Well, that's it. Thank you for joining us. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and we hope to see you back here next time.